Hello producers, it's Özgün here. In this video, as I promised, I'm gonna shoot start to finish techno series. It's gonna be inspired by mostly Boris Brescia. And if you're ready, let's get into that tutorial. So I'm thinking to make my track in key of A. That's why I have some kicks. I always put some favorite samples in a folder and I label them. So I use them in my tracks. For this, I'm gonna use this one. It's really tight, really punchy. It's really, it can really fit to some minimal track. So I'm thinking to make my key A sharp or A, we'll see. But it's no problem as long as it sounds good, which key you use on the, key, on the kick. Okay, let's start writing the bass line. For this, I'm gonna use Serum. One more layer to make the bass a bit more white. The second layer is going to be like eight voice. It's gonna be unison. Let's make the same octave. So, um, so I need to my mono layer to be more loud. And let's get rid of the randomness. So the phase will start exactly at the same point because you don't want to mess with the phase of the bass area. It can cause really big problems. And let's make the envelope like this. And turn on the filter. MG low 24, maybe a bit drive. And I'm gonna do some LFO like this. And I'm gonna connect it to the cutoff. Now it sounds more clean. I make the stereo layer phase random. And left the mono layer on no random. Let's give it some mono legato. It sounds really nice. Maybe we can give it some distortion too. Like soft clip a bit. It's really sound good to my ear. Let's write some bass line. I'm really, I, I don't have on my mind, I'm just improvising. Can it 
network. Let's sidechain it. So you know how I sidechain. I make the LFO size and the background size like almost same. And I can see my kick. So my base can be something like this. Oh, we put the wrong channel. I didn't even create a base channel yet, so let's make it base. Let's send it to two. Maybe we can do something like this. Okay, after making the side chain, let's put the base. If you don't like it, we can always change it. Let's see how it sounds with the kick. It sounds really nice, but it's really lacking the sub frequencies. So I'm gonna make a sub bass. Maybe I already have a preset for it. Let's see. Perfect, just the sine wave. Let's send it to a new channel and call it sub. So I'm gonna use the same LFO tool as my baseline and maybe I can change the baseline because I'm gonna cut the sub of it. I'm now separating the sub and the bass. Mm -hmm. Let's see how they sound together. One octave down. And we need to make sure the all the values are same. And my base should be like this. If I have a dedicated sub, let's put some Pro Q and see what's going on in the sub. So the first octave can be played only by the sub, and this can start something like here. Let's hear both. Now, when some parts, if I make some automation like this. My sub is not going to be affected. This is a really nice way to keep the things in clean and keep in control. So I'm gonna make some base group in here. Let's separate it and send these guys to only here. And before I start, I want to balance my kick and bass. I see this tip on EDM Tips YouTube channel. He was doing something like this and I tried it and it's working all the time. I'm soloing my kick and I'm gonna make it like minus three. And I'm gonna solo my bass and I'm gonna make it zero. It's not gonna be accurate, but just do some average to get to zero and then choose both of them and equally volume up. If 
if you do that, your kick and bass should be really in a nice volume. It sounds really perfect. So it's gonna be changed when I add some stuff, but it's a really nice point to start your productions and keep the things in balance. So now I'm gonna tweak my bass a bit. Sounds nice, but maybe we can add more groovy bass line. Let's a bit work on it. Give it to me, let's use and try this one. And I'm gonna automate the pitch of the basses. Two is okay. Let's see what if we do it one octave. It's probably gonna be too much. But I kinda enjoy it, so I'm gonna do it. We need to pitch a uh, sub and the bass at the same time. I can connect both to same automation like this. So my point is doing it. I'm going to do something like this in the endings. Oh, the 12 was really too much. Okay, I'm going to go back to 2. And create a new automation. And let's do the same to this one. We should change this to this. Yeah. Maybe something like this. Probably it's gonna be shitty, but I wanna try. Maybe like this. Thank you. 
I'm always thinking about the variations and trying stuff. Let's continue programming the drums. We are going to need some hi-hats. I'm gonna use this open hat. So probably we should make a drum bass first and then a hat bass. And this hi-hat should go to the hat bass. And hat bass should go to the drum bass. In techno, grouping and creating bass is really important. So my hi-hats should something like this. Of course, let's get a new channel. The length is a bit long, let's make it short. Sounds good. It must not clash with the kick, you need to be careful about it. After that, probably we can use some stereo shaper to like make the hi hat super wide, like this. It's really nice. I think we need to work a bit more on the bass. So I'm gonna create a macro. And this macro can open the cutoff. And if I automate this knob and like do some changes like this, it can be really more interesting. Maybe we can make it manually and in the second part we can do something different. It can be like this. Sounds nice. And also I can make another macro and this can be like this. So maybe I can use it in the intro like this. Let's automate the second macro. So it is going to be like this, like start from here. And 
in the intro, I'm not gonna touch the pitch. It can be start decreasing from here. Yes, it's really nice for now. Let's add a rolling head. Or some shaker, some sound like this to fill the background, especially in the intro. Let's try this one. I'm gonna name it as rolling head and I'm gonna send it to rolling head channel. It should be something like this. But obviously, like this. And maybe we can get rid of the attack of it. And maybe give some attack from here. Let's cut the loaves. Um, we should sidechain it, but I don't think we need to make it like 100%, that's maybe like 7%, 
put it like this. It's like giving some nice groove to the track, I like it. But we should make sure it doesn't have any bass frequencies on it. It looks side-chained. Let's see, but still, we can give it some slightly side chain. Yes, our drums are really going nice. Maybe I can add some little variation to the open head. Let's send the same channel. I think our hi-hats are done. We should even add more swing, but I'm gonna take a look to this later, because, for example, when we use some loop like this, let's fix it while we are talk talking about it. You see, for example, this one on the loop is a bit starting late, and this one is a bit starting late too. We need to, like, match all the sounds to that. If, if we do it, like match the samples groove and our programmed drums groove, it's gonna sound like really cool. Uh, let's fix it. Second one, first open head, should be a bit late. Like this. No. And this rolling, the third one, yeah. And the same thing goes to here. It's a bit tricky, but it's worth to make. And then, so it's basically all of them. As you can see, now the loop and the programmed head sounds like really just one sound, and it's what we are looking for. Okay, I'm gonna use this claps. They are not sound like they are fitting to the tempo. Let's fix this. I think they are a bit off to the grid. I'm gonna fix it.
let's send it to any mixer channel, claps, and I'm gonna send the claps to the drums. Let's see if we need to clear the low end. So it's number 10, I'm gonna probably like layer with one more, maybe some kind of snare sound, so this can work. I'm gonna send it to a probably new channel because I'm gonna give a bit more freedom in the low end to the snare channel. But in the end, it's gonna be layered with the claps. really nice. I'm gonna use this channel like when I stop the shaker because it's a bit too complicated with it. Let's copy this one. This loop is a bit too complicated, maybe I can use it like this. I'm still trying to like shape the track, shape the idea in my head, but I really like to finish the drum processing, almost finish all drum processing, then start producing, because it's gonna be really easy after processing the drums, we are free to like work, like think about the production process. <laughs> I'm really enjoying it. Maybe I can boost the kick a bit. And I have this crazy sound. It's 108, it's 128 BPM. I'm gonna and pitch it like this. OK, 
Okay, probably in the intro we are not gonna tease the open heads and also like we can delete this. So we are in the idea process. We should fill it with some epic samples. Let's go splice and find some cool sounds. For example, I want some reverse vocal in this section, especially some like deep angelic voice probably. So I have this kind of sample. Let's send it to a mixer channel, Vox FX. And we should create some epics group too. And I'm gonna send this to here. And let's give it some reverb. And maybe we can get one more and reverse it. I don't like this one. I'm gonna switch this sound. This is really better. And we can automate the panning of it. So it can be something like this. So the key thing is to repeat this kind of effects like every 4 or 8 or 16 bar. Okay, we need more effects. Let's go splice. Something like this maybe. And I'm gonna create some effects like general boss. So in this bus, I'm just going to make sure the sample doesn't have any low end. And also I'm going to sidechain it with the kick with fruity limiter. Let's go compressor mode, choose this and like this. And this sound is again from Splice. Let's pitch it two semitones up and make the time like this. It's gonna automatically fit to the tempo. Then you just drag this knob and let's send it to channel. And again, I'm gonna sidechain it like this because probably I'm going to use the same sample uh, in the breakdown without kick when I do that I want I don't want to like make automation for all the LFO tools instead I'm doing this for like background stuff I'm 
gonna put it really to the background. It's not gonna be like hearable by its own. Okay, keep searching for new samples. <laughs> it's like the perfect alien voices. It should go to the general FX boss like this. And this general FX boss should have a bit reverb to glue the samples to each other. This is really interesting some sample. Let's use it like this. But what is the key of this? Let's be sure. It's starting and ending with F, so we should make it like 400 semiton up. And again, I'm gonna send it to here. And let's create some white noise pattern. because we are going to need it in the transition parts. It doesn't have a key, so... Let's sidechain it, but like this. Why it's pent? Oh, because of the mid right? So let's cut the loaves. And even you can make uh, something like this, give the sound some distortion. And also you can shape the stereo field of it. Let's add some fruity balance to control the volume even better. And then I'm gonna automate the fruity balance to like volume down 
it's in time. It should be something like this. And obviously we need some sweep up and down samples to fill this area. By the way, we can do it like this. This is really nice. In this kind of music, Splice and like Loop Masters is your best friend. Unless you are really good sound designer, you can do the sounds, but for me, I can work with the samples. So it's G, B minor. So I should make it like this. To fit it in tempo and it's 129. Let's see how it's gonna sound. <laughs> I'm going to do something like this. By the way, let's send this to FX General. And then I'm going to do like this. So I have this long sweep up and down like a transition sound. I'm going to support my white noise with it. It's 124. I'm going to send it to like sweep do something like this and also I'm gonna side chain it as I did with fruity limiter I'm copying my FX loops. It should be like this probably. Maybe we can use some crash sounds. Let's search. This one and this one. We can make something cool with them. So it's F sharp, G, G sharp, A. And then it's 1, 3, 1. Let's make it. And put it like this. We can send it like to a crash channel. And I can send it to my drum bus like this. And don't forget to root this. Yeah. So it's number 13, let's send it to number 13 as well. really nice and probably in the intro we can make some cool kick tricks something like this maybe I 
I can put some EQ to here and like low cut the kick. Um, we can do the same EQ to the uh, bass group. So in intro, it can be really nice to like don't tease the bass at all. We will do with this. And I'm gonna link this to here to control both of them at the same time. So I'm gonna do like this. Sorry, like this. And let's add some uh, close head too. Because it's gonna be too long without some close heads in the first part. Actually, I had one close heads like this. If I remove here and go here, like send it to its own channel. Yes, this sound is going to fit better. And I'm going to do like this. Again, I have another idea for the background. Let's put some LFO tool and do something like this. If you have gross beat, there's some cool template to do this, but I don't have it. And probably I'm gonna make some bass fills to like change some of it and make some unique stuff.
maybe something like this. like this one so let's copy this pattern to other places So I'm not teasing every drum in the beginning, all of them. I'm just building like a ladder. But if I do something like this, I want to add this like in the second part of the first break, first like part of the track. But in this section, only open it, it's not gonna enough. So let's find some cool loops to here, even fill the background. <laughs> This one can be fit. I can use it like this. Let's get rid of the loaves of it. I like the rhythm, but the sound is not quite fitting, so I'm gonna replace it and search for a better sound. The sample selection, the sound selection is always taking too long, but it's worth to keep some, spare some time to it. I like this one, but if I'm gonna use it, mostly I gotta make back my hi-hats because we are using it not that much and we are now using it half. So it's this is going to be the main layer of the hi-hats. I need to get back like this.
really nice. And also, the lastly, we should have some writes, some cool write loops. Hmm, I kind of like this one. It can be a nice transition. And maybe I should not waste time with the writes for now. When I need it, I can just add them. But this sample is really nice. Let's fit it to the tempo. And it's like F, so 400 semitones, it's making it A. So we can use it like in the transitions like this. Okay, I need some percussion, like synth plug, something like that, to fill that space. And also I want to add some groove to my rhythm. I'm gonna use this sound. Let's see which key is this. It's C sharp, so I'm gonna make it like three semitones down, I think. I'm not gonna send to anywhere. But it's mm, not the sound that I'm imagining in my head actually. It's better. this weird rhythm can it be usable for like filling the background or use as an fx <laughs> not quite or this one Let's see which key of this. It's like D. 
let's be sure. It's like C sharp, A, D. Brace it, T, 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 Brace it, brace it. Brace it, T, T. Maybe we shouldn't touch it. It's if it's D, let's try to make it like A. I'm not gonna touch it because I think it sounds not bad and if you don't like it we can remove it in the future. I'm gonna cut the loaves. And we can edit some delay. Or maybe with like this. And let's give it some reverb. And let's give it some sidechain with a uh, 30 limiter. I'm gonna do like this. Oh, by the way, I should have I should have removed that. Oh, I cannot believe I make this mistake. Sorry, guys. And I didn't realize the kick was also going from this channel. I think I'm just confusing stuff. If you want to sidechain, you should not do it like this. You should do always like this. Sorry for that, but we realize it's in the end of first hour. I'm gonna do something like this. I'm gonna add one more delay and make it short. I'm gonna add my own delay to it. Copy this, like this. I 
maybe I can remove it in the intro. And before I finish today's video, let's balance the like volumes because I made a mistake with this. So I was hearing the kick a bit loud all the time. That's why I'm gonna like balance them one more time with the Vometer trick. Let's go kick. And let's go base and make it zero. And now I'm gonna turn on both of them at the same time. And now I'm gonna just balance my drums. And with and before I get like proper balancing, I'm gonna add some ozone and like I'm gonna use the maximizer like this. And just boost it a bit to hear how it's gonna sound when it's end. And I'm gonna put my fab filter and cut the uh, sides to 150 hertz. And cut the mid signal like 18k. And that's all I think. Maybe I can just lower some volume from here. Now it's like just put all the samples together and make the good volume balancing. Try this one one more time. Because when I do this, I don't need to volume up the hi hats. It's like when it's some sounds become stereo, it sounds seems like uh, is rising. It's much more to the human ear. That's why we are saving some headroom. It's a nice trick to do it with the drums. Still not sure with the sample, but we are gonna take a look at it in the future. And about the uh, claps volume, I'm always doing this. Just turn on the span and you are going to see the low end, your bass. And in here, you are going to see the hi-hats and the claps. That's kind of transient stuff, like drum stuff. The drum stuff, the highs, cannot be more than your kick and bass. So just if you are confusing, you can balance it like this. <laughs> And 
and I'm seeing some resonating frequencies at 8K. I'm gonna find and dip it. Can we make the kick a bit like more punchy? I have a better idea for the kick. I'm gonna make a small hi-hat channel like this. I'm gonna send it to mixer. I'm gonna use it like a top kick. I'm gonna balance the background stuff. And to add some more groove, you know, we make the like uh, we made the LFO tool of the sub with just perfectly with the kick like a puzzle. But we don't need to follow it with the like the mid bass, like the main bass. It can be like more groovy like this because it doesn't even have a bass on it or sub. We are really free to do whatever we want with this channel.
And I have more idea for the like this uh, fill parts. I think uh, our macro one could connect to decay of this. And like when we turn it on, the notes will be more sustained, like legato. Last part, we can use this right loop. It's D sharp, so we are in the key of A. If I make it D, A is the fifth of the D, so I'm thinking that can sound good, or we can make it like E, and E is the fifth of A, so let's try. <laughs> E fitting perfectly. So let's call it right and send to drum bus. In the beginning, there's some popping, so I'm gonna cut it. Okay, let's hear what we got till now. We finished programming our drums, we put the FX. We are going to add more when we like shape the idea. We made the right shakers, like rolling heads, claps, all the drums, and we like mixed it, kind of mixed it and grouped it like this. It's a nice start to make a track. Like I always start my techno tracks like this. I create some drum pattern, program my drums, and then um, and then the idea is getting in the shape in time. So today I'm gonna start producing from here because in the next episode, probably I'm gonna make some breakdown parts and then we are going to connect both parts and we will have a drop in here, then we will just finish the track. I think I can finish the track in one or two more episodes. We will say about it and just please let me know in the comment section what do you think about this start? What kind of sounds do you want to see in this track? Because in a couple days I'm gonna shoot the second part of it. For now let's just listen what we got here.
I'm really enjoying the parts. Uh, we should have lots of synths to the track to make it more interesting and we should have some cool melodies. I'm gonna take cover this parts in the next episode. And also probably I'm gonna, now it's muted, I'm gonna change this. Or, and I'm gonna like modify this one because I think it can be a bit better. <laughs> Yes, in the next episode we will see about it. Today that was it. I hope you can learn something from this and apply it to your own productions too. If you have questions and feedbacks, please write in the comment section. Until the next video, take care guys. See you. Bye bye.